Um, I kind of had a bit of a break with a uh, band, Amoeba Assassin. I was in like a kind of techno um, with a punk singer band. Um, when uh, Paul Oakenfold heard one of the tracks on The Essential Mix, which is a two hour mix on Radio 1 that's still running. And it's um, a mix that DJs do. Um, but I ended up doing quite a lot of the mixes for big DJs. One of my tracks was put on one of those mixes that I did. Paul Oakenfold heard it coming out of Cream one night and traced it down and found it was me and signed me and that was my first sort of deal with East West Records and Perfecto. And then after that I, I moved into producing bands and sort of varied from stuff with Gary Newman, The Human League, um, tend to be more synthy bands that I was really into at the time. Um, and in the last sort of eight years maybe it's been more guitar hybrid kind of crossover stuff really. Well recently I've just, um, the last Enter Shikari album, Common Dreads, and you know it went really well and we got I think every single A-listed on Radio 1, which they didn't have a single A-list before, so really pleased with that. On the sort of pop side, I did Starry Eyed Surprise um, for Oakenfold. Obviously I did the Big Brother theme tune. Other stuff has been remixes for people like you know, U2 and Madonna, um, a lot of that with Paul, and um, some of my more favourite things would be stuff I did with Ian Brown and um, Golden Gaze, I did a remix for Ian Brown which, was really good, which I really liked doing. Uh, and then I did a track with Korn or for Korn, a remix for Korn, that was really cool. I've got a kind of sound and a process I use and that process crosses whether it be a synth band or whether it be all guitars. Um, and I've got an approach to it, um, mainly utilising uh, on the recording side, utilising sort of the coolest mics and pre's and the old stuff and then getting that into the box um, and then working solely in the box and only coming out just to process the odd track. Um, and it's just a, a method which seems, it spreads that it's easy, it's fast, it's fun. You know, if you're working on a track and it's, it's you know, you've recorded the track, the drums, track, the bass, track, the guitar, oh, let's move on, you know, you just hit save and move on. Whereas if it's back in the traditional world, you know, the, the desk's up, you've got to keep going. And I think a mixture of that um, and sort of the approach with the guys in the band seem, you know, seems to be, you know, seems to work really, just seems to work as, as, a, as a sort of process. Yeah, I would say I have a distinctive sound. Uh, the closest I could say is it's sort of an English sound and it isn't too polished, but it's a sort of trick of, of, of it sounding not polished, but it, it, it is really, you know, underneath the kick drum is right in the right place and the bass guitar is right in the right place and the synths, are, you know, are super cool. But it, with the right slant and the right balance, that, that can actually sound pretty thrown together and cool rather than sounding, you know, super LA and, and super wide and, you know, the best mix, you know, and all this. So, yeah, that, that inherently gives it a sound because I do work drums, bass, everything is, but drums first, then bass, get that sounding good, get everyone excited about that, and then we start tracking everything else. Um, I mean, a lot of the time recently we track the whole band first and do live passes of everything um, just to get a vibe going and then maybe drop in and replace stuff if, it, you know, if there's not separation or if you need it. But yeah, the distinctive sound really from that, that mixture of... Um, of getting stuff sonically sounding great, but then getting the overall picture sounding a little bit baggy and a little bit edgy. Way, way back, um, I used to be um, an assistant and all the studios I worked in were SSL studios. I used to do a lot of work in Mayfair after that, stuff in Psalm East more than Psalm West. And they all had SSL boards, but I kind of left that behind when I went in what they now call in the box um, and you know the benefits for me far outweigh um, the other benefits that you have on a, on a traditional board. Um, but once I discovered they had some cool new products that were modular that would work brilliantly because I do really really for recording it's, it's all about mics and preamps really and a bit of compression it's straight you know into Pro Tools but with those basically. Um, so it was really exciting to find they had that and had this distortion, uh, the v, uh, VHD on every channel 
and he also had the Listen mic compressor. So I kind of thought, well, I'm going to be able to get a bit of that sound where, where I want it in, you know, in my mixes without having the traditional board and the big studio um, and you know, all of the inherent things, that maintenance that goes along with an old desk like that. Um, so uh, you know, it was really the history was the same as, as most people that have worked on the board. It does have a distinctive sound and um, you know, it was something that would be nice to have as a tool when you need it. Well, funny enough, <laughs> I don't actually do a lot of swatting for gear, and it was Rich from Hardfire who I'm working with who said he's going to SSL, would I like to come and have a listen? And he said that he was interested in this modular rack um, for himself. And then I read the spec on their mic pre, which has got the, the, um, the VHD circuit, and it was perfect because it had not only the distortion and the listen mic compressor, but it had an output gain, which is crucial to the way I work, it has to have an output gain. If it doesn't have an output gain, you can't overdrive it on the input and get a decent signal out. Signal out, you actually get an overdriven output, and then that defeats the object. So it just seemed perfect. So I went down to check it out. Um, fell in love with the sound of it. It was definitely something I haven't got um, sound-wise, and I bought one straight away, fully loaded straight away, which was all pre's at the time. I've now got a couple of compressors to try, um, which I'm really liking. It's been really good on, on the Hardfi album, which is what I'm doing at the moment. We've basically had it set up as a drum module, and because we were doing half kind of re pre-production rehearsals and then half tracking, the um, total recall system on it was really handy. Um, so we sort of, me and Steve, um, the drummer, would, would go in early, we'd get, play around with drum sounds, play around with mics, and then we could store it and I'd just make a memory up and then basically if you wanted that drum sound again you could dial it in and it would it would be pretty much back where you started. Um, and I was using it at the time for everything other than overheads just because there's only eight channels in there and it's perfect. I don't record much more than about you know nine mics if I can help it on a kit and eight would be perfect. Um, so yeah I mean it's really quick, really easy and you know a very punchy sound. Well, my favourite feature really is 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 pushing it um, hard on the input and using the listen mic compressors on a general smooth. I think it's is it smooth or yeah less. There's sort of a less and more, and I kind of have them in the middle, and you, you get an effect of a slightly overdriven desk like an you know, an old SSL would, but you also get that kind of warming from the listen mic compressor that maybe tape would add you know, a little bit of that into the box. I don't usually go too too hard on the compression whilst tracking, but um, certainly I will run it out again with the overheads and maybe do some, um, you know, compression, inline compression with it. For tracking drums, it's given me one box to sit at and quickly get a drum kit up. Now, knowing that I measure um, the distance between certain microphones and the snare or the overheads, it pretty much, if the drum kit's tuned well and the room's okay, anywhere I go now, I could recall, knowing from my, my notes which mics I used um, and the settings, and pretty much blind get the drum sound the same, which I couldn't do before, no way. There's no way to do that. So um, that, that has definitely changed it. Um, and I would say the sound, I do less work in the box now to process the sound. So I'm, and I'm trying to work more and more towards that. I'm trying to work more and more towards having the faders pretty much flat and having a really cool drum sound without bundles of plugins. Um, and that's more like how I used to work before. You know, you had tape, you tried to get a really good sound on tape, and obviously you mix it later but you're not just recording a completely naked kit to tape, you know, you're trying to get a vibe. So, um, and I quite like that. 